As fun as drawing female bodies is, it also might be super confusing, especially for those that are just starting out. So that's why today I'll show you my technique of drawing female bodies that will be easy to follow and repeat. So let's get into it. Hi guys, what's up? Natalia here. So today we're gonna start off with breaking down a couple of full body silhouettes because in this way you will be able to understand the human anatomy better and I will be able to explain you how the proportion works and how I'm using my technique to do female full body drawings. So these are the full body drawings that I did lately and I just printed them out so I can explain my technique better just using them as an example. So when drawing a body you always want to start with shapes for each part. For the head it will be an oval shape. For the torso part I'm always drawing a trapeze-like shape that is wider on top. For the arms I'm usually using circle as uh, the indication of the joints and then the rest of the arm I'm marking just with the simple line to indicate the direction in which the arm is going towards. Later for the hips I'm seeing what kind of direction they are on my drawing and then following that shape I'm drawing another trapeze-like shape. And for the legs same thing as with the arms. I'm marking the knees as circles since that's the point in which legs are bending and then the lines for the overall shape and direction for the legs. This sort of division into shapes is something that I always do in each and every drawing. Furthermore, you can see the shapes clearly now. I'm gonna sketch them out uh, on the side of the drawing. And as you can tell, there is a shape for each element of the body. And also speaking about another very important factor, the proportions. I like to draw the upper body part as uh, 35 to 40% of the silhouette and then the lower body as those remaining 65 to 60 percent. In that way, everything is proportionate. For next silhouette, the process and division is identical. I'm just adjusting the shapes to the directions of each body part, so you can see how flexible and adjustable this way of drawing actually is. Once you know how to divide your silhouette into those shapes, you will have no problem with drawing a body on your own. Because once you have this well-built construction, everything else will lie on top of that. But we'll handle that just in a second. And for the third silhouette, same thing and same shapes. Just their actual shape might be a bit alternated as the body is from a profile view. But the idea stays exactly the same. So now let's divide the silhouette into upper and lower body parts so I can explain everything more in details and in depth. So starting each body drawing, I'm always starting off with the head. And here the shape is gonna be oval-like with uh, two kind of axes of symmetry that I always like to do, especially the vertical one. So it kind of indicates the direction in which my head is pointing towards. In this case, we're drawing the simple front view. Later on, that is followed with this trapeze-like shape that I always, always, always draw for the indication of the upper body. I can't stress enough how important that is. And here, again, the circles for the joints. And those circles are for me this kind of loose indication of the fact that this part of the body is moving. This part is a joint. So I can kind of go from that and sketch the remaining body part in whichever direction I want. And here, another super important part while drawing a female body is, of course, the breasts area. In this case, we're drawing a front view, so this is very, very simple. And the placement of the breast will be kind of like under the joints, if that makes sense, under like where the armpit starts. But if you draw any sort of different placement of the torso, you will see how this will change. I will show you that in a second. Now let's go over this entire upper body construction with the mechanical pencil so it's more visible for you and also you will see how I'm adding the volume to my construction, so the actual body. And here while adding the volume to the body, I'm being extra cautious with first of all not adding any harsh lines to my sketch because human body doesn't really have any super straight lines, so I'm making everything kind of flowy and rounded. So that indicates the three-dimensional kind of feel of the body and the sort of natural look of the skin, and natural softness that it has. So here with this example, I think it's very visible how important it is to construct your upper body properly. And usually when you draw a full body silhouette, you will draw it as a whole. But I think it's very important to practice separate body parts as well. You can literally divide any sort of body part into shapes and it will make it so, so much easier. The whole process will be 
better to understand for you and once you really understand and get that shapes technique into your head I think you will have no problem with drawing any sort of body part and obviously the full body as well now let's draw a couple of examples of each part of the upper body so you can see how my shapes technique works starting off with head the oval shape plus the axis of symmetry with just those two things actually three things you'll be able to draw any sort of head placement and head view. Now for the torso. Here we're gonna do those trapeze-like shapes. The upper line of it will always indicate the directions of the arms. For example, if one arm will be higher than the other, draw the upper line on diagonal and go from there drawing joints and, you know, uh, constructing the whole body drawing. Also drawing side view of the upper body of the chest area is pretty much the same but the trapeze shape is cut in half and then we're just going to build the body onto that kind of. And here in this kind of view obviously the bust area is more prominent and it will be kind of like sticking out from the side so also be mindful about that. Now for the lower body, the hips and legs. Starting off with yet another trapeze like shape but this time it will be wider on the bottom. Here the shape of it will also indicate the width of the hips, so if you want to draw the hips more narrow, draw more square-like shape, and if you want the hips to be bigger, draw the shape bigger and wider. I think this is pretty pretty simple. From that we build our legs, drawing the lines with the circles for the knees. Here when I'm sketching the legs, I usually draw the lines already a little bit curved, so they right away indicate the shape and the kind of placement of the legs. And once I have that, I'm kind of right away already building the shape and the volume of the legs, uh, starting with the thighs and then the calves. Here again, we're going to avoid any straight lines and we're building the legs with that sort of bouncy and curvy lines. And obviously, very important note here, it really depends on what kind of body type you're drawing. Obviously, if you're gonna be drawing a more skinny girl, uh, the kind of body shape will not be as bouncy and curvy. However, if you do draw a more plus size body, it will be even more curvy and bouncy, the, the overall shape and volume of the body. Anyway, there's also one more thing that we should keep in our minds while drawing the legs, and that is the proportions of the thighs to calves. Usually the thighs will be a little bit longer than calves, so remember about that. For some few more examples to practice, I will show you how I'm using the shapes technique again to draw different positions and poses of the lower body. So here, take the trapeze-like shape as a base and then try to build on that, minding the shapes and directions. As you can tell here, I'm showing you the examples of kind of one hip being higher than the other one. So then our shape, this trapeze shape again, is accordingly kind of on diagonal. And then also with that comes the position of the legs because one leg will be significantly lower than the other while the whole uh, weight of the body is held by one leg. And just a quick practice of drawing the calves, here you just need to mind the shape of them. Usually they are not very flat, usually they do have some curviness uh, to them on both sides, so bear that in mind. So even though drawing legs and the lower body part might be a little bit tricky, I was also there and I was always struggling with making the legs proportionate and not look like two sticks because with the leg drawings you have to know where the volume is and how to kind of shape them but i really hope that this a uh, little bit was helpful for you guys and that you will understand how to construct them but here again the referencing the shapes technique always use lines or some geometrical kind of things to help you out to guide you through the entire process never start your leg drawing by drawing for example knee or feet no, 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 no. We start off with bigger shapes, bigger objects, and then we go into details. This is how I always do it, and I think this works pretty well. Okay, so now we're finally moving on to drawing the full body poses, and we're gonna start off with just very basic kind of front view standing pose. And here you can tell that I'm starting off with doing my base shapes, uh, the geometrical shapes that we just learned how to do. I'm following all the guidelines that I told you before and I'm kind of sketching the whole picture first, the whole construction, and then I'm gonna build upon that. I can't stress enough how important it is to start off with the general pose, the general idea for the illustration, for full body drawing, for any sort of drawing. 
and then gradually build on top of that and start finessing each detail. So again, start from the general outline, the general construction, and then focus on building the head, then the torso, and then following that, draw the legs, and then as the very last step, finesse all the detail, then maybe add some clothing, but we're not focusing on that today. Uh, you can check my previous tutorial on clothing if you wanna check how to draw clothes on a body. But anyway, that's the rule that I'm gonna follow while doing any sort of full body drawing, whether it's just a simple pose or a more complicated one. I know that jumping into drawing full on, full body female poses might be a little bit scary for those of you that are just starting out, but I think that if you follow through this uh, tutorial, I think you will have no problem to or at least just try to do some full body drawings just to, you know, get a little bit of the flow and just to practice what we have studied throughout this tutorial. And anyway, if you feel like you're not gonna make it or if you feel a little bit too insecure about your skills still, uh, first of all, don't be, just practice, it's all gonna be fine. But also, if you actually are still a little bit, you know, uh, not sure if you're gonna make it, just grab a reference picture. If you use a reference picture, it will be way easier for you to see all the proportions, see how uh, the shapes are and in what kind of way the body is aligned. So don't be afraid to use reference pictures, but if you can do it with that, it and just practice around then I think it will be even better and now let's try to draw a little bit more dynamic of a pose because in this pose we're gonna be having the shoulder area a little bit on diagonal and the hips accordingly on diagonal as well so with those kind of more dynamic poses as opposed to the static poses which obviously are easier to draw I would advise you again to use some references if you don't really know how the proportions and how the alignment will work because here uh, our shoulders as I mentioned will be on diagonal but our hips will be on diagonal but in a opposite direction because everything has to be balanced out so in this sort of way we can tell that the weight of the entire silhouette is on one leg which results in this sort of uh, imbalance, let's say, in the positioning of the shoulders and the hips. Those sort of little things when it comes to how the body is aligned in each pose, you will get within some practice. So do not worry about that. If you feel a little bit lost with how each pose should look like, use references and then definitely within some practice you will learn how body functions and how to draw each pose. Same with the third pose. Here we're gonna also have a little bit of movement going on. This is the kind of walking pose, so here the shoulders and hips are also going to be in opposite directions on diagonal. So I would also advise you look up how this pose uh, looks on some references or you can also just do this pose yourself and look at yourself in the mirror and see how everything is aligned. But also even with uh, such pose a little bit more complicated again, you can still see how I'm going through the general idea for the pose, constructing all of the base shapes and dividing my silhouette into those geometrical shapes. And then accordingly and gradually as well, I'm focusing on each and every body part. And then I'm finessing everything kind of at the same time, but following the rule of starting off big, let's say, the, from the general idea and then finessing the tiniest details. And that is all for my today's female body tutorial. Let me know if it was helpful. I really hope so. And yeah, I'll be seeing you guys very soon in my next video next Saturday. So make sure you tune in. And yeah, I'll be wrapping up. So see you guys soon. Bye.